what's good y'all it's your boy ross back again with another video so just finished watching hell in a cell 2022 um wasn't that bad uh it was it was actually um uh, somewhat enjoyable it wasn't something a pay-per-view that i would go back and actively watch again outside of the hell in a cell match between cody rose and seth rollins it's probably the only match i would go back and watch again outside of that match everything else was serviceable but enjoyable you know it wasn't anything where i was like this is god awful but it was serviceable and enjoyable shout out to everyone that was a part of the live stream reactions on the clutch gone road page thank you guys so much for being there um but we're gonna get into my thoughts and opinions kind of go down the list and uh i'm gonna also talk about where I think things will go in the future for some of these individuals in these matches. So, let's start off with the Raw Women's Championship. Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch versus Asuka. Very good opening match. Crowd was extremely behind Bianca Belair. I called it. Bianca was going to retain. And it made sense for her to retain. It didn't make sense for her to drop the title. Um... I will say, I think the only thing I was kind of confused on is uh, Asuka eating the pin there. Um, it was a little transition where um, uh, I want to say uh, Becky Lynch hit her finishing move or whatnot. And that's when Bianca Belair, she was on outside of the ring. Uh, um, Becky hit the finishing move on Asuka. And then Bianca comes inside the ring, throws uh, Becky Lynch out goes in for the the pin the one two three quick pin and she retains the title that way by pretty much kind of pulling uh i guess you could say um a becky lynch move because becky lynch would do something like that i mean it's a triple threat anything goes when it comes to that so it's all about making sure you get the pin and she threw out the ring and it seems like they're setting up another match i hope they don't I do not want to see another match between them. I don't. Between uh, uh, Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. I, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't want to see another match between them. I think we've already gotten the story that Bianca Belair, this is her time. And, you know, she's, you know, a, a formidable champion. Um, the match itself was enjoyable. A lot of fast-paced action going on. Bianca Belair had a great show and showing off her strength. In, in this match, I like uh, that Becky Lynch, uh, not Becky Lynch, Oscar was showing her submissive wrestling background as well, putting uh, Becky Lynch in multiple different types of, of submission locks and stuff. So I, I was liking the fast pace of this match. I was liking that they were showing each individual woman's strength, uh, even Becky Lynch having her moment to shine. I, I was enjoying that e each woman had time to shine, but definitely Bianca was starring this one, just how strong she really is. And uh, I hope this leads to a potential match, in my opinion, Bianca versus Rhea Ripley as Rhea Ripley be as being a heel part of the Judgment Day group. I hope that's where this ends up being. And then we can discuss title changes. But right now, I do not want to see another match between Bianca and Oscar Grant uh, uh, and Becky. Granted, I don't know how they would set up a a, a, new, a match between Bianca and Oscar because Oscar ate the pin here. So I don't know. I think Becky should have ate the pin here, ended the feud there, and we we start a little program between Oscar and Bianca because Oscar said you never pinned me. So maybe we can do something like that. But it looks like they're setting up maybe one more match with Bianca versus Becky. I'm hoping that's not the case. But enjoyable ma match nonetheless to start off the show. Then we got Bobby Lashley versus Omos. An MVP in a handicap match. Crowd was very uh, over. Uh, well, the crowd was very hyped for Bobby Lashley. Like, he, the crowd definitely showed love for him. Nice, nice crowd reaction. This match was okay. It was just, I'm, I'm just really was wanting this match to end the feud here. And uh, Bobby Lashley can go on to something better. Um, it was okay. It was, it, was, it was serviceable. It's not something I would go back and watch again. Omos, I'm still not sold on him. He's just a big, he, he's a version of Kali. That's all I get from him. It's the great Kali vibes. He's. 
not just really that proficient in the ring he does some you know he, he's big he's huge he's imposing that's that's really his offense you know what i'm saying he, he can throw you around that's cool but i can't really get into an omos match i just can't he gives me great Kali vibes when it comes to his in-ring ability mvp good as a heel uh you know as a heel manager and uh he ends up they they wanted to keep omar strong um he ends up putting uh mvp uh in his submission move and uh mvp ends up tapping out and that's what happens omas gets thrown outside so omas doesn't need to pin mvp was there to take eat the pin there and hopefully they can go somewhere else with Bobby Lashley. I do like the fact that I think he took like a fan's replica WWE championship and he just was holding it around. I don't know if that's the implications of him potentially going getting to the world championship title picture. Maybe so. Maybe so. I would how would you guys feel of seeing a face Bobby Lashley who's kind of get, getting some love right now from the crowd going against potentially Roman Reigns? I think that would be good. Let me know, am I am I tripping here? Bobby Lashley, a face Bobby Lashley going against the odds against Roman Reigns? Could be good. Could be something special. Let me know if y'all was getting some little hints there. You know, but Bobby Lashley wins, which I'm okay with. Hopefully, this feud is done. So, it's not a match I'll go back to watch. I was just, it was, it was all right. It was just good that they made the right decision booking-wise. All right, Ezekiel versus Kevin Owens. A.K.A. Uh, Elias. Uh, this match was... I, I, I like the... Sh the funniness. Kevin Owens being so funny is what's making this match. Well, what's making this whole situation, like, actually entertaining. The match itself, I, I gave no fucks about. I'm just being honest with you. But wrestling has always had weird, like, hokey matches like this. Like, this match is really based off the fact that Ezekiel is quote-unquote Elias and Kevin Owens is trying to tell everybody this is Elias and he's saying, no, I'm Ezekiel. I'm his younger brother. Like, this this is literally what this match was made off of. And I thought Ezekiel was going to get the, the little quick win here, but no. They gave the win to Kevin Owens. I don't know if they continue this feud. I think they should dead this feud, but I don't know what you do with Ezekiel. So, I, I don't know. Maybe they continue this. I... Uh, I, I don't think they should continue this, to be honest with you. I, I, I think Kevin Owens should be focusing on other things. I think I'm sure they're going to probably put him in the Money in the Bank ladder match, uh, which is that's the next pay-per-view. So hopefully he's focusing on that. And we go from there. It, it was a fun, a, it was an okay match. It, it was okay. He, you know, the crowd gave him some Ezekiel chance. It was just like, ah, all right, it's cool. It, 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 once again, it's not another match. I will go back and watch, like, majority of this pay-per-view i would not go back and watch but if it's on television or whatnot it's my first time seeing it it's it's, it's enjoyable that's that's what i can say it's like it's not bad it's like a it's like a better version of raw that's how i looked at this pay-per-view a much better version of monday night raw um then we got aj styles finn balor Liv morgan versus the judgment day of edge damian priest and rhea ripley cool this, this was a cool mix a uh, tag match, man. It was okay. Uh, I was expecting someone else to come out to maybe help the Judgment Day. I was expecting, like, I don't know, maybe like, uh, like a, um, I don't know, maybe uh, who? He's been tagging a lot of people. Uh, I was like, thinking Tommaso Ciampa would have been very great for him to come out there and be one of the new members, but. I'm not sure. Maybe they'll put a trigger on that in these upcoming weeks. But uh, yeah, it was it was it was a it was an okay match. I did see AJ Styles get busted open. Apparently, uh, I, I didn't see the spot where he got busted open at. So comment down below. Let me know how that happened. He was it was he got busted open legit. It was blood everywhere towards the end of the match. <clears throat> and then, of course, uh, Finn Balor. End up, uh, he was about to go, you know, top rope, hit the coup de grace on, on edge. And that's uh, when um, Rhea Ripley gets involved. And, and that kind of going with that line, like, you're not going to hit a woman type situation. But it caused enough of the distraction. 
and uh, of course Edge ends up hitting Spear, and uh, you see the shot of they're, they're lingering on this shot of you know every you know everyone in the Judgment Day. They're just like, yeah, we got the win, and Finn Balor just kind of on the ground in pain, and they're just looking at him. Maybe and a lot of people have been saying this. Maybe Finn Balor does end up joining them. That could be a possibility. Who knows? But as it stands, AJ Styles can't get a win to save his life on pay-per-view. I don't, they need to go ahead and end this feud. <laughs> like, they have not beaten... AJ Styles has not beaten Edge yet. Just end it. <laughs> he is... He cannot beat him. So, I, I don't know what they're doing with AJ. AJ's having a tough time getting a goddamn win on pay-per-view. Don't know what's going to happen here. But I will say, like I said at the beginning uh, of the video, I would like Rhea Ripley to start, you know, transitioning and trying to winning the Raw Women's Championship from Bianca Belair. And they really start building up this faction as a real, credible, champion-winning threat. So, we will see how they play things out and who potentially will be the new member. All right. Madcap Moss versus Happy Corbin. no holds barred match. It up to the ending, it was probably one of the most boring. I, I don't want to say boring. There were some good parts on it. I'm not even going to be that critical of it. It was when I think of a, a no holds barred match, I really think of some shit hitting the fan. Shit really didn't hit the fan until the very ending. That's that's really the ending of this match actually made me enjoy the match a lot more. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. What he did, what Mad Cat Moss did, he embraced the roadness. That's what really, really for me personally was like, okay, I enjoyed it because of that. Everything else leading up to it was, uh, it was okay. It was just like kind of some of the stuff I've seen before with them in this feud. I didn't really, like Mad Cat Moss, like, I didn't really get a sense. I, uh, there was some aggression, but I didn't really get the rogue aggression until the very end of the match. So we get we get to the end of the match, and they they've, they've basically been telling the story of you know all these damn chairs. There's being chairs being used everywhere. You know you got steel steps being introduced into the ring or whatnot. I did like the fall away. It was like a little fall away slam. Or whatnot that uh Mad Cat Moss hit on Baron Corbin after he eviscerated him with a steel chair. Like I said, steel chairs were primary weapons in this match. Enjoyed it. Uh, but it's shades of what happened to Mad Cat Moss. He put his chair, he put a chair around his neck, or whatnot. Um Baron Corbin. Uh, uh Mad Cat Moss put a chair around Baron Corbin's neck while he's laying on the mat. Steel chairs propped up in the uh steel steps propped up in the corner. Picks up the steel stuff, throw it on the edge of the chair per storyline, crushing his throat. It was great. Very brutal. Got the one, two, three pin, and they had to stretch him out. They sent him to, he sent him to the gulags, stretched him out up to the rampway, had officials and stuff selling it. I enjoyed that. That was cool. That was a very cool rogue moment for Mad Cat Moss. I don't know. If the fans are really, truly going to get behind him, we will see. But I did like that moment. I thought that was cool. That's what saved this match for me. I would not watch this match all over again. I would just watch like the last five minutes. Because that was <laughs> that was just cool to see him finally get his revenge. And maybe he goes into something, some lucrative storyline. We will see how the fans react to his future storylines. But I think no more. I think we can all agree. No more of this match. No more in the feud. That was it. Let's move on to something else. Then we got the United States Championship Theory versus Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali back at home, hometown, hometown love. Crowd was definitely going for Mustafa Ali. Was not a bad match. I expected this match to be pretty solid, and it was it was enjoyable. Very good, very good uh, back and forth between these guys. This was uh, uh, a solid, enjoyable match. Would I watch it again? Mm, once again, it's still for me, it's not something that I'll be like, oh, yeah, I got to go see this again. But it's it's like an upgraded version of the stuff they've been doing on Monday Night Raw, in my opinion. Uh, it was it was cool for what it was. Um, I do like the fact that uh, the knee, uh, Mustafa Ali's knee was a, a, 
uh, the target for focus for uh, um, for theory, uh, for Austin Theory. And I will say this about theory: I'm starting to like him more and more. I am starting to like him more and more as I watch his matches, watch his mannerisms. Uh, he can definitely be a future big player, depending on if they continue to book him correctly and give him some meaningful feuds. I like it. Uh, I'm, I'm liking his character. Uh, it just depends on they got to put him in a good feud. He needs a, I guess you could say, a bigger baby face to really rub off on, if, if that makes any sense. Mustafa Ali was good with the crowd. There was a couple of moments you thought they were going to, uh, you know, give him the championship, but I knew it, it, they probably weren't because Vince is very high on on uh, Austin Theory. So I think he needs that one potential big baby face that could give him that extra, extra, mm, you know. So we will see how that plans out. But I predicted it. Austin Theory did retain. And, um... It was a it was an okay match. It was it was an okay match. Nothing. I'ma just go you know watch again. But something that you could be like, all right, they they had a decent showing. So it was cool for what it was. And, you know, and uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure who I would like to see Austin Theory feud with. Comment down below. Let me know who y'all think he should potentially feud with. I think the Mustafa Ali stuff. I think we can kind of move past that because they've been having him go at uh, Mustafa Ali for the past few weeks. I think we need someone fresh, a new baby face that could potentially be a threat to his United States championship run. So who do y'all think would be a good person to feud with Austin Theory? Let me know down below. And of course, the best match of the night. The match I was looking forward to. The match that everyone was looking forward to. Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins. Hell in a cell. So, can we just say Seth Rollins is doing some of the best heel work of his career? It's, he's doing some of the best heel work of his career. I'm not even going to lie to you. Remember when Seth came out there facing Roman Reigns and he had the shield gear and he came through the crowd out of the mind games? He did it again. He comes out there. He had like this robe on. You didn't know, you know, what he had under it. You know, this is just like a, a big, obnoxious robe. He takes the robes off, robe off, and he comes out there in old school Dusty Rhodes wrestling gear with the polka dots. I was like, oh, the match was already, <laughs> already solidified just by Seth Rollins being a piece of garbage coming out there in his pops. His dad old school polka dot uniform. Oh, like oh, uh, attire. Oh my God. When I or when I realized what it was, I was like, bro, he's he's sicko mode. And I love it. Seth Rollins has been one of the best things on Monday Night Raw. He is fantastic as a heel. I cannot say this enough. Very great work he's doing. Very fucking great work he is doing right now. Um Fantastic. Cody comes down. Cody comes down. You know the reports. He's been he was injured. People were worried if he's not gonna be on the show. Cody comes down. He has his traditional gear on. And you can see a little discoloration like on his pec. Like his, you know, when he, uh, on his pectoral muscle. Just a little bit. You can tell, you know, like it looks like there's something that the the rumors are maybe true. When I tell you. When he takes the actual, his coat off, and you see the pectoral muscle is completely discovered, discolored all the way down to his arm, to this section of his arm, just, just a horrible purple black color. I, I cringed. I'm like, oh, that was one of the, oh my God, that was sickening. The dude was out there wrestling with a torn pectoral muscle. Apparently, he injured himself from what you guys were saying was lifting weights. And he ended up tearing it, I guess, off the bone. The man still was out there to wrestle in a Hell in a Cell match. 
The dude is out there wrestling with a torn pec. Completely discolored. I didn't know what I was seeing. It, it, and to be honest with you, even though it's a real injury, it added more to the match. Because now you know he's injured. You know he's hurt. And it looks awful. You know he's in pain. And he is out there. I. The, it made the gravity of the situation even that much sweeter. This match was great. Seth Rollins, so far, has had some of the best Hell in a Cell matches these past few years. I was out of the one he had with, obviously, The Fiend. That was god-awful. He has redeemed himself. This Hell in a Cell match he had with Edge last year. Crown Jewel, easily one of the best matches of last year. The Hell in a Cell he had tonight, fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, my God. At one point, Seth Rollins went up to the ring... Found like one of uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes strapped. I, had to, uh, I think it was like polka dot strap or something like that. I'm not sure. And he started whipping Cody with it. He was hitting kendo sticks onto his torn pectoral muscle. Like stabbing at it. Hitting him in the arm with it. Like it, oh my. Anytime Seth Rollins hit that side of him. I just. I cringed. Every single time. And I like the fact. Cody's out there literally fighting with one arm. And if he would try to hit a move or use his, his other arm, he would be in an immense amount of pain. And you could tell. This ah, uh, this was great. Great. Fantastic. I even loved the ending. Of course, Seth goes under the ring. Seth would definitely stay going under the ring, getting whatever items he could. Pulls out the good old sledgehammer, right? It's going to go. Try to hit, you know, Cody with it. Cody's in a, able to move out the way. Then uh, Seth tries to hit Cody with pedigree. And then Cody reverses it into his own pedigree and hits him with it. I was like, oh, this is very, very ironic. This is very crazy. Cody Rhodes hitting a pedigree on Seth Rollins. That, what a sight to see. I like the little crossroads. Cody Rhodes uh, no, Seth Rollins hitting a crossroads on Cody. Then Cody getting getting out of it. Well, he get hit with it, then gets back up, hits a crossroads on Seth Rollins. And then towards the end of the match, I love this segment, this part where Cody's like, nah, bro. You know, he 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 pulls the shade of what he did at WrestleMania. Hits Seth Rollins with one crossroads. Hits Seth Rollins with another crossroad. He's going for the third one. He was like, mm-mm-mm-mm. We're not going to do it like that. Picks up the sledgehammer. Sledgehammer still in the ring. Hits him with the sledgehammer for the one, two, three, and the win. Crowd was enjoying this match. I was enjoying this match. Me, uh, I mean, Dub and uh, Trill Billy, we was enjoying this match. The chat was enjoying this match. This was great. This was fantastic, and I loved it. And Cody, Cody, dude, you you deserve every penny that WWE is giving you. You gave the fans what they wanted to see, even though you're walking around with a torn peck. You came out there and delivered or making sure the fans got the main event they wanted to see. Because if Cody wouldn't have been able to do this main event, this pay-per-view would have been a dud. It wouldn't, it, it would have been just like a Monday Night Raw. And I think the crowd would have been disappointed. You gave people their money's worth. Ah. The reason why I end up giving this show the rating is what it was. Because of what Cody Rose did in the main event. He wrestled that entire... That wasn't no quick match. He wrestled that entire time. Giving it his all. Injured. You gotta respect a motherfucker that does that. You have to. That I, 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 there's nothing else I can say is Cody, he, he has my utmost respect. He had my utmost respect. He has it even more for delivering a good match, a fantastic match, and I enjoyed this. And, uh, yeah, 
that's that's pretty much it, man. I don't know how long he's gonna be out. Uh, I'm sure they may have to do some surgery if it's tore off the bone. He may be out for some time, and that's gonna really that changes a lot of things. Don't know how long he's gonna be out, so we'll probably get an update on his injury. But yeah, Cody, bro, you you. If there's anybody that deserves the WWE Championship, it's that guy right there. That guy right there. So, um, overall, man, on a scale of 1 to 10 for this show, for me, I said it. I, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It's 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 okay. It's serviceable. It's, to me, it's a Monday Night Raw. It's it's Monday Night Raw, but better. That's, that's really how I feel. It's, it, I, it feels like... If Monday Night Raw was like this, it would be more enjoyable. If Monday Night Raw had this type of energy with the matches, like they actually wrestle on the show and have solid to decent matches, I could stand Monday Night Raw. I could. I really could. But this is, to me, is probably, you know, it, it gives me a Monday Night Raw vibe. Uh, even though there was one SmackDown match on there, it still gave me a Monday Night Raw vibe. But it was okay. It was okay, and the last match definitely, definitely made up for everything else on the show that was just okay. Outside of the women's championship match, which was pretty enjoyable, um, this last match, Hell in a Cell, it, it definitely saved the show, made it that much more enjoyable. So I give it a 7 out of 10, man. So comment down below. Let me know what you guys give this pay-per-view on a scale of 1 to 10 what was your favorite match what was your least favorite match and what storylines and uh potential feuds are you looking forward to man let me know down below man but i appreciate all the love on the channel road to 90k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one. peace